up. Good morning. Here we are again on our morning walk. And uh, I don't know, as we enter the what, third month of this pandemic, I don't know how you are feeling, but I don't know, I'm, I, I'm getting to feel a bit weary. <laughs> a bit weary. I recently thought we've got you know, three major converging sort of tsunamis coming upon us. First, we have this coronavirus and how it's affecting each one of us, but not everybody in the same way. We are hopefully all struggling with the seemingly senseless death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. I know I am. And finally, I think there's a third thing that we're struggling about. And that has to do with our vision of America. Um, what we think is important. Uh, what should be valued. How should our leaders behave. These are troubling times. Yet I am, I am convinced that what we're called to be now is to be peacekeepers. The Bible talks about peacekeepers. Jesus mentioned the peacekeepers. Blessed are the peacekeepers, for they shall be called children of God. Wow, that's a big, children of God. Whoa, 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 wow. But how do we, how do we go about keeping the peace? You know, there's various ways to do it. We can, we can do it by force. We can say, if you don't ask peaceful, we're gonna, we're gonna throw you in jail and arrest you. But historically, that's been a very short-term solution. I was comforted the other morning to, to read that the Boys and Girls Club in Madison, the director there, Michael Johnson, had uh, put forth a proposal to hire 50 young persons as peacekeepers. And I'm sure they'll be selected and, and trained to really help us bring you know, peace in our city. And that that's a good model. It worked pretty well for us in the, through the civil rights movement and through uh, anti-war protests. It's important to have peacekeepers. Unfortunately, and here's where I get into trouble, is that, um, you know, I deeply believe in my heart that police officers are to be peacekeepers. And not by threatening to arrest people, but by working with people in solving the problems that has caused the disruption that we're having and the need to make peace, to find peace. I think there's also a major point in this, a, a part that we can do, that we can be peacekeepers. And how do we do that? Um, how do we, how do we do that? I think the most important thing is how we use our words. Um, and as my dear wife frequently reminds me, the tone of my words, that how are they contributing to bringing peace? But then if we're talking about bringing peace, we really also have to think about what has caused the breaking of the peace. What has broken the public's peace? And then we need to roll up our sleeves and do something about that. Uh, we need to fix it. So that which I am struggling today is, what is the fundamental question out there? Why is it that we have disturbances in over 140 cities? Thankfully, the number of lives have been lost are, are minimal, not like 
in 92 with the uh, Los Angeles riots surrounding the acquittal of the officers who beat Rodney King. So we need to listen. We need to generously listen to other people to find out what is the problem specifically. Let's let's understand this. You know, seek seek first to be to understand and then to be understood is an important part of this. So let's let's do that. Let's ask and let's listen and let's work together to make this pass and come out the other side hopefully a better a wiser, a more loving, and a more peaceable society. God bless you today. Talk to you tomorrow.